Welcome to a new video where I'm going to quickly show you how we can texture a terrain in Houdini using Copernicus. We're going to start here from scratch by using a terrain and we're going to use the terrain hills as our default setting so you can have the same. So here are a bunch of the notes and you can also change them to have a little bit of different uh, visuals to not have the standard template. We can go to the node hills and for example do some offsets that will make the terrain look a bit different than the defaults. And we can also go to the erode node and change these values so you can copy mine and force the frame and then reset and force a, a erosion simulation on top of that. So this will be the terrain that we will be working on. Further down, what we will do is we can also delete the visualizer. It's not needed for our case because we're going to use our texturing. We can also place a null node and this will then be referenced to a Copernicus network in a moment. Let's talk a bit now about storing custom data as well. Let's say you have some custom data. For example, you built a flow field and you would like to have that day information as well. So this node will calculate a nice flow field. As you can see, you can tweak some of the values if you want to. But what we will do is we will want to store this in a layer. So we're going to use a node called copy layer and we can now store the mask in a new, um, in a new layer. We can give this a name like custom flow field or anything you want custom data for rocks for trees for houses anything that needs to be saved we can also just simply use the feature uh, mask by feature node which allows us to get for example here the slopes for cliffs and so on so we can use that of course in a moment for texturing too as well so that could be custom data that we add on top of this as well if you want to add more stuff feel free to do so now here is all the data that we will like, extract in copernicus in a moment and you can double check that there we can now place our Copernicus network node, that is, we can just simply place it. We're going to place a SOP importer node and reference our terrain null node that we had before. Now this is still a height field, so we need to use the height to layer node. This converts our height field into actual layers or will have extract the layers from it. We need to press this button called set import from geometry and it will automatically get all these uh, height field layers that we've made before. So these are now all referenced in here. We can now create a null node and we will use that in a moment. So we can call it color and reference one of our images. As you can see here, our masks like that. So this mask will now be used as a texture. We can go back and we're going to preview it on our terrain. There are a few ways of doing this. I will show you one way, which is using the quick shade material node. So we're going to use a quick shade and this will preview a texture. And instead of now using the default texture, we're going to drag and drop our Copernicus network into it. We're going to reference that color node that we just made. And the only thing that's missing is now to use a little function to grab the texture, which is going to be OP with a double point. So this will now grab the texture. We still need to delete our mask from our terrain because it's sort of interfering a bit. So we're going to say clear mask of the height field. And now we are previewing the texture on top of the terrain. A small tip is to also then lock our viewport at the top here. And we can now go back and start texturing our objects on top of the terrain. So this is our height information. I also recommend to equalize this because our height is the raw height data, which can be very high. And we're going to equalize this into a zero to one range by just simply using that node to automatically uh, renormalize this or bring this into a better value that is more understandable to us. Now, other maps here are available to us. So again, we can do whatever we want. We have all the data ready now to start. We can place a color node by just simply here getting an RGB color and giving it some green grass color like feel. So as you can see, we're now starting to color it. I do want to add some noises into it. So I'm going to choose a noise. It could be a cloud noise, something else, play around with the values, maybe I lower it. And we're going to use a huge saturation value note. We're going to use our mask as the noise. And now we can start coloring. As you can see, we can play around with the values and we can start to derive our noise in, on top of our grass or on top of our green constant color. So play with these values until you find like something that looks a bit more grass-like or something that you find usable for our start of texturing. Now let's bring in some of our height map, for example, so we can have a lot of things uh, to add. I'm going to use the same trick by using hue value saturation and use our height as our mask in this case and redirect our line. Now we can use this to, for example, color the top of our terrain. So we can make it more of a mountain shape or we can just make it very subtle and uh, add another one. We can also do ambient occlusion, so we can grab height fields from ambient occlusion, and we can use the same trick that we did before with the hue, hue saturation value and blend it in. You can see that our ambient occlusion is not working, so let's preview it alone separately. And you can see, not really what we expect it to be. So let's grab our raw height data, and let's tweak our scale, and you can see now it starts to appear uh, more like I would like to see it. 
so we can grab now this data and we can now use it correctly. We need to invert our ambient occlusion range to make sure that our other node receives the data well enough. And now we can color this slightly based on what you'd like to see. We can add some nice color touches. We can add another one and we're now going to grab our flow data for example for some dirt or other things so let's play around with the slider so we can really see that we have this flow in this terrain and let's make it for example uh, blue for water or let's make it more brown for dirt type feeling in there for variation in the ground so that could also work really really nicely we can do another one we can just keep stacking these notes as we go we can grab for example debris layers and here play around with the values as well to understand where the uh, the mask uh, coloring will be so it's a nice edge around these cliffs and we can again make it a bit more brownish and then subtle subtly blended in with the rest of the terrain something i've not mentioned of course is that we can also do distortion so we, this is just modifying texturing data so we can distort noises with uh, uh we can distort our mask with the noise for example the worldly noise and we can plug it in and use that as a mask as you can see it will create all these sort of speckles maybe we can view it here separately we can also here maybe lower it down and as you can see you can sort of see what is happening it's sort of like breaking up these lines and distorting this as we go now we're going to add another hue saturation value and we're going to grab for example the water layer so let's add some water into our terrain so water will often be blue we're going to first play around with some sliders to understand where our water will be. You can see it's very, very subtle and maybe we need to place a remap. So let's place a remap on our mask to sort of boost that value. So let's boost these values to understand roughly where that water will be. So you can see we boost it a bit and now we can go back to our node and maybe tweak it until we have like something that looks more like waterways going in there. Now we can do another one, another hue and value saturation and use our mask that we've made before for the cliff so this will be roughly the cliff parts so we can color these cliffs in a more brown darkish color and make it subtly blended in there so now we have starting to shape up a terrain really nicely a cool trick you can do is also blend in shadows i find that pretty cool to do so let's uh, separately view this you can see that this is going to view the shadows we need to make some tweaks so let's set this to a sphere and uh, tweak some of the values as you can see we can uh, tweak the angle and this gives a really really cool result and we can also use this to blend in uh, our terrain so we're going to use the hue, val hue value saturation node again and then blend in to have some different nice colors so if you see here we can blend this in we do need to invert this again with the remap we can control this and now we can see that we can nicely blend this in with some nice controlled uh, shadows we can also do, for example, a sharpener. We can just simply place it and we can sharpen to extend or boost some of the details a bit more into our terrain. So we can make it a little bit nicer and feel a bit more sharp. And in some cases, you might also want to have a normal map. You can use the height to normal to extract a normal map from our height map. As you see over here, we can just use that. Or we can also bake uh the maps as well you, you then of course need to set up a whole baker and lastly what i want to mention is that we are also bound by the resolution of our terrain not only by the texture but also our terrain comes in a specific resolution as you can see by default it was actually pretty low so that's why we are working at a quite low resolution that was it for this video hope you like and subscribe see you in the next one